hello hello so this is that chest that I was telling you guys about from last week I think it's been usually I go right into asking you what color you want it painted and then I go into painting it but with all the different delays we've had I'm starting now this is a custom blend of three or four colors by Dixie Belle and I will if you're interested in what colors those are I can just ask me and I'll let you know later because my brain won't tell me I'm just applying this with a Dixie Bell regular brush. It's called the Dixie Bell Mini. <clears throat> and I'm just putting it right on top of this with no primer. I haven't sanded it. I did clean it, but that cleaning consisted of just wiping it down a bit. This has one of those clear coats of a stain where they probably put polyurethane on top of it. And I am <clears throat> gonna be distressing this, so I kind of want the paint not to have to be perfect, perfect. I, I see something already that I thought I got all the ones. Um, the person who painted it before had a paintbrush that was not agreeing with them. Did I get that? Yeah, and some of their, uh, their paintbrush bristles came off into that clear coat they put on and so I'm just using a razor blade to remove those. I thought I got them all but there was another one. I mean if it stayed it would have been horrible but since I caught it and I had it right there I decided to go ahead and just take it off. So I'm just doing a basic coat. I am not adding water yet with my misting bottle. just want to get this paint on here and then I want it to dry for some time. Can you, is that another, believe it or not, another paint bristle, not my paint bristle, the person before. It's like their paintbrush just didn't like them so I'm just using this to get it off. I don't know if you can see it, that's it. It's just, I can tell it's their old paintbrush. Seem the brushes just came off and stuck into the clear coat that they had applied. Hold on one second. I have a visitor and I'm live. <laughs> hey, you hear me? and this maybe the paintbrush I could I don't know but I'm not gonna break into her car I told her to use her AAA which she says she thinks she has so of course I went live and she came into the patio sorry I usually lock the gate on the patio so people don't come up but that happens I feel so bad when people lock their keys We've all been there. And of course, Jade was protecting me by letting her know not to come in the house. <laughs> good job, Jade. Jade is a really good rescue dog, and she's super friendly. But if she doesn't know you, she's letting you know, don't come in this house. <laughs> Which I used to not like, but now I know that that's for a reason. It's called protection. It's because I give her the treats and she's protecting the treats. She's not protecting the house. She's like, uh-uh, I get treats here. You're not getting any of my treats. Okay, another paintbrush. These are, I don't know if you can see them. See them? They used an old school paintbrush. Um, we all have had those. Where did it go? Okay, I saw it and I got distracted. There it is. 
So I am just going to use this, scrape it up. Again, I did catch a few before I started painting, but as I'm painting over it, I see them and it is so easy just to take that second and get that up. Comes right up. All right there. So yeah, Jade's like, you're not getting in the treats. I'm not sharing them. So don't come in the house. Alrighty. Woo! Just by opening up that door, it has uh, just started raining. The humidity, it feels like it went from a hint of fall in Tallahassee to it's 80 degrees and humid. And I think even the camera might even be fogged up. Sorry, you guys. By opening up the door, we let all that, let all that foggy, foggy air in. I'm gonna just go sideways with this and there's spots where the paint I would have to really get it into there because you can see where the wood was sawed and it left the saw marks and what I'm doing is I'm just going to apply paint and come back this way but I'm gonna let those saw marks stay there you know why I love it and that's what I want so I would have just stressed back. I know it's hard to see because this is on the edge, but these, you'll see them. They're just, they're luscious. I don't know how to say luscious. Okay, she's, she obviously got her keys because she's moving now her car. So, um, so yeah, I want those saw marks to say. So even though on this, I'm going over and it's hiding some of them, some of them are staying. So I like that because I would have just stressed back to get those to show up. I really do like uh, the saw work on this piece. I bought this from my local gentleman who actually built this and he was selling it. I don't know if he was moving or what, but he just wasn't very impressed with his, with his woodworking. And I have to admit, I mean, there's, it's raw. You'll see, you can see the boards. They're just three boards and they're screwed in to another board. So he made a box, basically, and this hinge is all messed up. Um, we did a little bit of a repair to it, but I'm going to not paint over it right now because I haven't decided what I'm doing with it. But he almost seemed embarrassed to admit that he created this, and I was like, oh, this is awesome. So, and because of the wear and tear, decided to paint it. I'm hoping that someone will love it and want it as either a coffee table or an end of the bed table. Chest, sorry. Um, it has a lot of room in it. Okay, I'm just gonna get a little bit of paint there. Cause I'm gonna be just stressing that back. I didn't wanna remove the lock and the lock may not go back on until I decide. I'm also debating still, haven't decided if I'm putting um, feet on this. If it becomes a coffee table, I will probably put little feet on it, um, either bun feet or little, uh, oh, they're out there, I just can't get to them, straight up kind of square feet to match because bun feet are kind of roundish and a different style than this is and I kind of want the style to reflect. So I probably will go with the straight on feet. There's some knots in this wood. Um, and some of the paint is going into it and some of it isn't and I'm just letting the paint do what it wants again I'm going to be distressing this so leaving some of it the way it is is wonderful it is starting to dry on top so if you see it kind of looks like two different colors it's because it's drying in some spots and not others I'll let it dry and uh it just on the camera might look like two different colors but it's not all right, oh, dripped a little bit. I added a little bit of water to this. Um, usually with Dixie Bell paints, 
it's very thick and luscious paint so you don't really have to worry about drips so much but I custom made this out of several colors and I added some water and that's making it drip just a little bit more than what normally would happen with Dixie Belle. And again, you guys would see me usually using my misting bottle, but because I added some water to this and the consistency that I'm going for, I'm not misting it right now. I may mist it when I do my second coat and or my distressing or glazing or waxing or whatever I decide to do. I haven't decided. I posted a video, I think it was last week or the week before, about what am I going to do with this? What do you suggest? And I still haven't decided. We just got in some amazing transfers from Hocus Pocus, which is in South Africa. We've been waiting and we finally got them in and they're amazing. I like those and Redesigned Prima. And I may use a transfer on this once it dries. So when you're using a transfer, it's best to go ahead and apply paint and then you apply your transfer once it dries, the paint, and then you add a top coat. Some people go ahead and top coat their paint and then try to apply the transfer, and the transfer may not adhere as well. So it's better to paint, let it dry, transfer, and then seal your entire piece. I know that's a little different because sometimes when I'm painting and I'm gonna add a glaze or a wax, I say paint, seal it and then add your wax so you can manipulate the wax which is very true when you're using wax but when you're using a transfer you want it to go onto the raw paint without a clear coat in between when you're adding glazes and uh, waxes and distressing and that you want to add a clear coat and then add your wax and stuff so you can manipulate it and pull it back as much as you need you have better control it doesn't muddy up your paint as much if that makes sense you know how if you mix colors, let's say uh, <laughs> yellow, I can't think, yellow and, and red will make orange. So if you were to put yellow on it and then clear coat it and then red and then stress it back, you would have the yellow and the red. But if you don't put the clear coat and you put it right on top of each other, it'll blend and dirty it up and make orange. So that's the reason why sometimes you'll hear us say clear coat, then the next step and other times like on transfers will say don't clear coat, just apply your transfer and then go from there. Okay. Got that first coat on there. It's looking good. I can still see there's some, like I said, some wood damage here. Not damage, but where the, the knots are showing through. And I'm leaving those. And I'm leaving the screws. Sometimes the paint covered up the screws and sometimes the, the dip into there is not as deep and it didn't cover it. I'm letting it just do what it wants to do because I want to see what it does and then let me manipulate it from there and see how much I like it or not. Sorry the camera's all fuzzy from the outside to here. Let me get this side. So the paint is kind of a greeny blue. I don't know. Some people say farmhouse. Some people say sage. There's so many names, but again, this is kind of custom blended. So I know I've got vintage duck egg in here. I was trying to remember the colors to tell you. Um, Stormy seas, some black, which I think I just went ahead and added midnight uh, sky, which has a tint, hint, hint of blue in it. Not much at all, but if you see it against caviar, you would know it has a hint of blue. And then I think I had a little bit of sage left over, so I mixed that into, you know, leftover. What I call free Tupperware from getting food to go. So I just custom blend it. You can add white and lighten it up. You can add dark, make it darker. For example, once I'm done with this base coat, I could go back and add white to this and go over it with just like a brush stroke and it would look like two different colors because you're highlighting it or you could go darker with some more midnight um, sky or caviar and go with a darker tint you could even use it as a glaze you can take clear glaze 
mix in your paint and tint it and just go around the edges that would be dirty from wear and tear of your fingers when adding a little bit of black you mix it up and then you made your own glaze so there's a lot of things you can do and once that happens i'm like oh, what do i want to do with this piece most of the time i have an idea but once i start working on the piece and then it starts kind of you know sounds weird talking to me speaking to me then i change my mind hence why i do not do customs someone will say "Ooh, i want that but i want it yellow well guess what i'm gonna paint it <laughs> if you want it yellow you have to change it up yourself um when doing customs people are very particular about what they think it's gonna look like and you can tell them like i know you think goldenrod and this and this and this color is gonna turn out looking like this but it's not um so i don't do customs i do uh, therapy for myself so what's fun for me to do and then I hope someone loves it and it finds a new home if not sometimes I've even had to wait and then be like you know what I do have to repaint this it's not selling and guess what normally if you go back and just paint white over it it sells right away but I get so tired of painting white furniture all the time so even though I do love it You'll hear me say that over and over again. I love white, crisp, farmhouse, cottage core looking furniture. It's fun, but oh my gosh, it becomes really dull when everything is just one color. Okay, I'm getting those edges that I went over a little bit, which is okay. Sometimes if you get a little extra paint on your edges, you get a little bit of raised bit and some people hate that but when i'm doing it on dark wood and i know i'm going to distress it it's a perfect spot for distressing and coming back to that wood shining through so i don't mind that so much now can you see you can probably see now that some places look more greeny or blue because it's drying this part's dry i see parts here that aren't so it's just kind of whatever it decides to do now if this was on wheels I could turn this around and show you that I'm painting the back of this now, but since this is so large, I do not have it on my rolling dolly, so I'm just going to take this little bit of time to paint the back. I know you can't see, but I'm just going to show you. Just keep going. There are little hinges on the back here, and I'm just going to go around the hinges. They're kind of old looking. These look definitely older than the um, the trunk apparatus he added to open and close it. So I like these. These look really farmhouse antique. Whereas the other one looks like uh, probably 80s faux brass. So, all right, almost done. So this is what I should have done weeks ago is I tried to go ahead and get that base coat on it, let it dry think about it sometimes even overnight sometimes if we get busy like we did this last week it might take a week and then I'm like I know what I'm gonna do for it. and then I start working on it again with a larger piece like this it takes up most of my dining room as you can see oh you know what I wonder if I could turn this on will that help at all <laughs> there but it helped if I turned on all the lights hi I can see your comments not too often but i looked up and i said hi hi letha aka lethal letha aka my mom okay so like i said if this was on wheels i would turn it around and show you but you can see i'm just painting just this real thick sorry not thick thick in the fact that i'm not watering it down with the mister bottle so that's when i say thick meaning i'm not watering it down because the paint was custom made and I added a good deal of water. I feel like it's already kind of watered down. So I see another brush he left. Whatever paintbrush he was using was not helping him. It, um, the bristles kept coming out in his clear coat. I can see it over and over again. So I'm gonna get the, I'm gonna get the razor blade back out and get that off and the paint over again. All right, almost done with the back. And then we're gonna let it dry. And then you guys can always comment below what you think should go. A transfer, should it be lightened up with some white paint? Should it be darkened up? 
Should it be left alone? Should it be severely distressed or just a little bit distressed back where the wood shows through? What do you guys think? And please don't say, don't paint it, because guess what? It's painted. What did that take, 20 minutes? It doesn't take long, you guys. And there's no smell. So I'm in my house, my dining room, I call that my home studio. <laughs> Um, in this little condo. Um, it's the best I have for painting at home because of COVID instead of painting up at the store right now. The store is open today, you guys. The other side, Vintage and Robert Square Art Park. And we're open online, theothersidevintage.com. Please comment below any ideas, what color you would have painted it, what color you thought it should be. Have you painted something like this before? Have you used Dixie Belle paint before? All right, there we go. It's weird how it dries because you would think the whole top would be dry because I did that first and the side would be still drying, but there's parts here that are drier than parts on the top and I'm using the same. So the wood sucks it in, however the wood wants to say. Transfer or polka dots? <laughs> I originally I said I'm gonna paint it pink with white big polka dots and make it like a little toy chest for a little kid so I ended up not doing that but I like the idea of the polka dots you can still do polka dots I could do black polka dots I could do purple polka dots you can always add polka dots but all right so I'm putting this back on my fancy paint saver also known as a to-go container I think this had soup in it and it was going to be tossed anyway so I just cleaned it out save it and it's really airtight because they don't want the soup to fall over. so I custom blended some leftover paint so when you get down to those last little bits in the jars you pour them in another jar you mix it up get it to and you're like oh, I kind of like that and then you use it and now just that little bit of paint and I'm gonna just wash that down the sink and I can do that because it's all water-based it's no BFCs it's all natural it's not gonna hurt the pipes so that's what I'm gonna do. One more thing, I use these paintbrushes a lot, but when you get a new one, in the beginning, just like that gentleman that was painting this, you get a little spare on here, just clip it with scissors and take that off. That's all you gotta do. So I'm gonna rinse this out, let this dry, and possibly work on, well, you can't even see. There's other things, and if I move the camera, it might. There is another, it's over there. See it over there? It needs to be painted too. You can buy those from Amazon. What can you buy from Amazon, Letha? Polka dots? <laughs> Sorry. Paint brushes? I don't know. Anyways, oh, the containers. Yes, but see, we got food to go, and this was egg drop soup, and um, I ate it all, rinsed it out immediately, and I've kept it just for this occasion. So I feel like I'm repurposing my to go. And saving the earth by reason I can even wash this out because I'm gonna use all this paint I can even let it dry and put more paint on top of it and use it again for a whole different color so I like doing that I love doing that and so by the time I'm done it's gonna have used a lot so there you go you can also when you get to, yeah the containers I thought that's what you're talking about when you get down to the bottom of the paint you just have a little bit left let's just say a little bit and you're gonna add a clear coat you can take your clear coat, I don't have it in front of me, you can pour it in here, mix it up so that this color tints your clear coat and then put your clear coat on, which will be this color. Now don't do that if you put a transfer on and then you're putting a clear coat because the paint will cover the transfer. So don't do it that way. But you could put the, the clear coat on and then if you want to touch up around the transfer or hand paint, you can go back and paint flowers with a different pink and hand paint on top of the transfer after it's clear coated with just a plain clear. So there's so many things you can do. So keep, again, even if you get down to here, keep it. You'll mix it up with something else. You can use these so much. So, all right, you guys. Voila, voila. it's going to dry. I'm thinking I'm going to change that up. And, uh... Yeah, sometimes I go ahead and paint the thing right next to me the same color, like that thing back there, 
that is a podium it's just the top of a podium it's got some damage to it so I've got to fix it up but I'll go ahead and just use my paint or here's another idea I think I've told you guys this summer here's just some wood I found some raw wood someone was doing construction on their townhouse here and put this by the dumpster and I can just put this paint right onto it off the brush so here let me show you what I'm gonna do <laughs> it's messy but I'm gonna take my misting bottle because this is raw wood and it's gonna soak in a lot of paint so what I'm doing is I'm adding a layer of water misting it with this misting bottle a fine mister bottle so then when I take this paint now I'm gonna make a piece of art out of this board probably just a sign here it's hard to hold and do let me show you what I do so I haven't misted my paintbrush but I'm gonna miss my paintbrush right now it's still got leftover paint on it instead of wiping it down washing it down the sink I'm gonna offload so it doesn't look like much but if you're gonna paint that whole chest behind me that trunk that I just did that color and you're gonna have that much paint left over on your paintbrush have something to offload it on hence this raw wood board again it doesn't look like much but by the time I put two or three coats on there and do this this board will have the base coat and I will be able to make a sign out of it and this will just be the base color it makes me feel better than just wiping it down the sink again it's low VSCs there's no smells it's all natural, it won't hurt the pipes. But you can almost get another project out of what's left over in your paintbrush by just offloading. So always have like a frame or some little doodad sitting next to you so you can get some of that paint off. And like I said, by the time I do a second and a third coat, this thing will have the base coat and it'll be time to make the sign. Maybe it'll say spooky, happy fall, I don't know what it'll say, but the background color will be that color. So it's almost already dry. So again, I always have, you'll see raw wood if I can, especially if you're near construction, grab a piece. You can decoupage on these, you can make signs, you can have kids color and you don't care. So there you go, that's what I did. So paintbrush, misting bottle, which I only used on the sign and the trunk that is dry again it's soaking wet here and here and here but totally dry here like I could already start painting the second coat on it but I need a break I gotta check the messages because the store's open and people have been bling 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 the phone so Instagram um, check out our Instagram the other side vintage Facebook and I'll answer them and then I'll come back and put another coat on Yippee! at least I got one project done today right Okay. Oh, and those leaner signs. If you saw my live the other day, the patio leaner signs. Hey, Nanelle. Um, I sent two into the store. They're Halloween on one side and thankful, grateful on the back. So Jason says, I can't think of anywhere to put the new consigners. Sorry. We had someone asking if we had space for them to move in and we actually think are full. So we went from COVID losing some of our consigners we had for years, almost having to close down. After 20 years, we thought COVID had kiboshed us, but instead we held on and people had to give up and some of our consigners stayed and they expanded and they held in with us. And now, praise whoever you praise, we are full again and we have some great consigners and booth owners. They're all family owned as well. So grateful, um, humble, like I think COVID is awful, but it also was such a blessing because things I started to take for granted, whoo, you start to get on your high horse and take things for granted and the universe says, let me, let me throw 2020 at ya. So anyways, okay, enough of preaching. I don't preach very much, so. Here we go. Thanks for watching uh, theothersidevintage.com. That's where our Instagram, or eBay, or Etsy, all that stuff is. And we're in River Square, Art district.com. So if you go to riversquare.com, you can also look up at our neighbors. All right, let's see if I can do this. Hello everybody, so I'm going to do a quick live video of something that we haven't really tried that much, so if it fails, you watch it live. Failing, we already did this one right here, and it seems to be holding. For those who are you who are super professional, yes, there are a hundred different ways to add feet to a chest. 
this is the way we are adding feet today and that's because oh. it's covid oops <laughs> almost got my feet yes <laughs> where'd it go hold on it's underneath it's covid um we both have been we both have pinched nerves officially <laughs> <laughs> And we are adding feet. Now I took these feet, let me tell you real quick and then we'll get done because one, I'm super panicky and I really don't want to go live today, but I hate when I'm doing something different and I'm like, that would be better live. So these feet came off of a couch, a roadkill couch. I literally saw these feet. They were real wood. They were not painted this color. They were wood. They were like this. You unscrew them comes with this part and then you took which thing you take a pair of vice grips vice grips and he's going to show you again just makes it easy to remove there are a hundred ways to add feet to a chest we are doing it with limited space not going and buying these brackets you can buy at home depot or lowe's we are just doing it this way so for those who you were like that's not how we do it well you're not doing it today we are and we're doing it as quick and as good as we can with a cabinet sorry a chest that was custom built. So there you go. He took this thing. What's that called? Vice grip. Vice grip, and he pulled this piece off. We'll again, save that in case show you need them another again. day. So see, this is still on. This one's off. So we took that off. Now he pre-drilled four holes in the bottom of the chest. We have to bend over because this is the only angle we can get. You can see. There's four pre-drilled holes that he went in from the inside of the chest out. So it's on its side right now elevated and then he put screws in make sure he gets screws that are long enough to go through the board and then the other board and then enough to go into the foot too and so he pre-drilled holes and then he how did you get that so he just put them in just enough to, <laughs> to stick out just a little bit just leave this little pointed tips out little pointed tips out then you take the piece that you just took the other piece off see where it needs to go he's going to and then you push Press on, on it, it to make a mark so you're marking. Then it'll leave little divots, which then I go through and drill the little pilot holes for. Right. And and again, these are real wood. Make sure if you're taking legs off the roadkill uh, couches that it's the real wood ones, not the ones that are, look like wood and then they have that particle board stuff in because this won't work with those. Nope. It has to be real wood. And uh, little tip, mark which way you pressed it because... You know, the screws are all the holes that everything lines up, so. And again, I painted these, um, these wood ones in the color to match this, so I should have taken a picture before, but you saw me do a live painting this chest. I painted the legs to match the color. So this chest is either going to be a coffee table, a kid's trunk to put toys in. Um, there's so many things you can make it, but this, it needed feet because it was sitting on the bottom. And this is the way we're doing it. Again, I know... There's a bunch of ways to add feet. You can YouTube it all day. This is the way we're doing it on this particular one. Each one's customly done. So here we are. This one still has, we took that off. He has made a mark and now I'm gonna hold and hopefully we don't say any words that um, we're not supposed to say as we're trying to, I'm putting pressure as he's drilling into the wood foot. You ready? I wanna say yes, but I'm gonna put my body into it you guys. So I'm sorry. And then that screw you can see, is grabbing into the wood foot. I'm going to say hello to Meredith who's sending us a message on our Facebook page. And I can't answer it because we're live right now. But Meredith, I will answer you. Is that it? There we go. It's on. Okay, you guys. He did it. It's um, just a quick, easy, you know, slap you the legs still on. do the... Uh, wait. Can you see the other side now? <laughs> the other side. No legs. Okay, should I do this and be brave? I'm gonna do this and see if. Oop, not high enough. All you can see are my shorts. Okay. Do you wanna try to do the other side now? While we're still live? <laughs> hey, Barbara! Let's see, I need to. Actually, I think we might need to put that other piece outside so I can get my. Large oh, because of our side. limited space in our studio, which is our <laughs> dining room floor, we're out of space. So anyways, that was a quickie to show you how to do the legs. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. Um, I was hoping we could do this live, but we cannot get behind it and screw into it without more space. Unless I move this over. Yeah. Hold on. 
Hold that thought. Watch me do this and we break the whole thing. What am I going to? The cabinet? You do the bottom leg and then... Uh, you're going to have to grab the sawhorses. Am I grabbing the thing or the sawhorses? Both. <laughs> Alright, you guys, here we go. Up in the air. And... Wait. Sawhorse with your foot. Moving. Not working very well. Hold on. Okay. Stop. Is it okay? You're way that way and I'm way this way. So it's a little teeny tottery. All right, you guys, now. <laughs> that was so great to do live, let me tell you. Nothing better than be prepared to go live and then not be prepared. And by the uh. way, if you haven't heard the devastating news, Eddie Van Halen, lead singer and creator of the band Van Halen. Not lead singer, lead guitarist. <laughs> lead guitarist, <laughs> oops lead guitarist and creator of Van Halen. My 80s heart is hurting. Died. I think he was 65? Uh, yeah, I believe Throat so. Throat cancer. I mean, this 2020 is awful. <sighs> Bottom of the stop. He is drilling from out into the chest and just a tiny bit coming out of the pre-drill holes. And I say stop when it just sticks through just a tiny bit. Again, you know, it's hard to see. I wish I could zoom in, but I can't. Um, Momo Mallow wants to send you a message. Hello, Momo Mallow. I'm sorry. And that they're Hawaiian. That's not sticking out enough. No. Just a tad bit more. A little bit more. It really just needs to be a Okay, that's it. That's it. That message was from Instagram, but it notified my phone, and I'm using my phone to film. Stop. He stops before I say stop. He knows what he's doing. <laughs> I'm the, well, once you tell me the first one, then I'd screw them all into what looks I'm like the, the same I'm the assistant height. that doesn't assist very well. And I'm also the one who said it has to have feet. My vision is to have feet. You go and make that happen. <laughs> I tried to figure it out myself and I came up with a bunch of different ways and I told him the different ways I would do it and he was like how about we just do it this way and his way was a hundred times easier. Now I am going to use this sticker as my this way up. He's marking it so we know once we... A little arrow that way up. Yeah. So then, shoom. Almost up. done. Oh. And then line it up. He's lining it up with the pre-drilled holes and the, the screws are sticking out just barely. Is that it? And then me as the assistant. I try to rock it all four ways so you're getting a nice little The screw is going to indent into the wood. So it leaves a, a hey, pattern. It, it's very tiny so you're not going to see it on camera but there's little tiny holes. Little tiny holes. Why don't you put the pencil in it and take it up to there? Leave your pencil in the I'm hole. I'm just making sure. Okay, uh, I got four. Hopefully it won't make the uh, camera cut off because sometimes he's showing you that that's a tiny little oh, pattern. Oh, yeah, you can't see it. It's picking up. See that little tiny speck there? Yeah. yeah that's it. So that's how you know. He's going to put it back on there. You guys, this is crazy. I just want feet on it. Like I thought, well, we'll just put this on easily with the bracket and this. And he's like, no. It depends on each thing and how it was created. And this is a custom built uh, chest. Her so. famous words are, it's just take a few minutes. It'll only take a few minutes. I figured it out on YouTube. Could you just help me with this real quick? And then I'm like, here, you do it. It's kind of like designers who design dresses and then they give their pattern to the pattern maker and then the people that cut it and actually cut and sew it are different. I wish I was better with tools, but... Hey, at least I have a cordless drill that I got, so. Alright, we're almost done. <laughs> I painted this live last week uh, with Dixie Belle Paints. I think I custom blended and used different glazes and stuff, so you can watch that. I will post an after picture when we're done. He's going to line it up now. Press. You're gonna don't strain yourself because I gotta switch. Okay. Oh. I'm putting pressure on it. 
so that when he drills into it, I'm giving it resistance to grab onto. All right. And he's trying to do this well. <laughs> he has about three inches of space. Oop, I just moved right. a little. And we, you still feel good? I don't know, I moved a little. Does it feel like it's wobbly? Or does it feel flat against the it wood? It feels flat, but I don't know if it's gonna okay. go into the actual hole now. All right, you ready? Yeah, I hope I didn't move it. Did I grab it right that time? I can feel it crack. Boom. Shakalaka. Yay! It's on there and it's not going anywhere. We're almost done with the feet. Custom feet. Rescued from a roadside couch. You take couch. a try at that. You can see. I don't know how you do. You, now, why you he squeeze that until it clips and it'll lock into place. Yeah. Look, did you squeeze the vice grip till it locks? Well, I'm just holding so, it. Well, the whole point is you don't have to use force. I'm and not using force. It takes less energy. I'm just spinning it off. <laughs> <laughs> it took less energy to take them off the actual couch. Again, make sure that the legs you're taking from a rescued couch that's on the side of the road is real wood legs, feet. I used the bun feet too, but this one needed some more uh, squared off. There you go. We took that out. He's going to... Mark it for the pre-drilled holes. Okay, so it's really through. It's out. And now the last ones, just, they're out. The four screws are gonna come through. The pre-drilled hole. Two done. It's out. when it's done and I get to see the new home that it goes to. Hi, Brian! Brian, I know this isn't the way you would do it, you would do it professionally. It's out. Professionally, because Brian knows his skills when it comes to woodworking. I don't. We're just putting legs that we found on it and I didn't have plates, I didn't have all the others, so we're just doing it the old-fashioned way and that's what's going to work for this square box that we're putting these square legs on, so. All right, now he's gonna indent and make the pattern of the screws. I'm gonna move over here, a limited space. Again, we're in our dining room floor. Because of COVID, we had to move our warehouse out of the warehouse from Redwood Square to our home and uh, be able to do things from home. Hence why it's limited space and not great filming, but. So he's marking it. Okay, left top. He needs the screw to come out a little bit more to make the pattern mark. Again, this is just the way we're doing it on this one. This isn't the way you would do it on all of them. There's, again, hundreds of ways to add feet. This is just the way we're doing it on this project. All right, it's out a little bit more. He's going to make the pattern, and then we're going to screw into it. Denting into it to make the mark. I don't know which way it was up and down, but he hopefully won't remember. It's marked. It's marked. Again, I'm just the assistant making it more difficult than it is. Oh, there it is. And we're almost done. Limited light source, limited space. I'm going to hold it and he's going to drill it from the inside. Drilling a little bit on this one. I do it all over. Uh, he's pre drilling the holes based on the pattern mark that he made. Again, That's what I said this would not be split in the feet. He's trying to keep it from splitting the feet, which I didn't understand, but I get it now. Ooh, it's hot. Even inside. Humidity's kicking up because there's a hurricane out there again. Yep. Alright, I'm going to hold this one, and this will be it. I did move a little bit. This one isn't as flat as the other one. Using my... You ready? Yep. I can feel it grab it. That one's stripping a little bit. Yeah, it's a little... 
It's Oops. always going to be the last one or two yep. that's going to strip. Done. Done. Yay. All right. We will post pictures later because there's not enough room to take this off the sawhorses, turn it upright, and take a photo right now on a live. <laughs> I mean, we could try. We could put it on the thing. <laughs> and I did paint these to match, but you can see these are sealed a little bit darker. So I will seal these with a clear coat by Dixie Bell, and then they'll be ready to go to the store tomorrow for someone to rescue this and take it home and love it. Wish I could keep this. I really love this chest. Again, you'll see the pictures. I know that you're seeing the bottom and not the pretty side, but I promise you, this baby was rescued and I'm so excited about finding a new home. See you soon.